In this video, we'll find the volume of the region between the blue cone z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and below the red plane z equal to 1. We're going to do so in spherical coordinates. And by virtue of being in spherical coordinates, I automatically get a factor of rho squared sine of phi. And I've chosen an order of integration, d rho, d phi, d theta. As is typical of any figure that has this nice radial symmetry about the z-axis, it's pretty common to see a choice of 0 to 2 pi for the limits of integration for theta. Once I fix a typical value of theta, I'm going to get a radial slice of my figure. Here's a typical value of theta uh, chosen between 0 and 2 pi, and when I do that I get a triangular slice of the cone parallel or, or, or around this, uh, containing the z-axis and, and parallel to this uh, ray that theta forms. I'm going to draw that in a plane. Notice the horizontal axis is the r-axis and the vertical axis is the z-axis, the r-axis meaning the radial distance as I move along this ray that theta forms and of course the z-axis is our usual vertical axis. The line here uh, that is determined by the profile of the cone is z equal to r, and I know that because z squared is equal to r squared, and then I'm solving that for r to get that linear expression for the line. What I need to do next is determine the values that, phi, uh, that the angle phi will range through. Remember that phi is the angle formed between the positive z-axis and the point that you want to get to. In this case, I'm going to start with a value of phi equal to uh, 0 that corresponds to the ray going along the positive z-axis. And then I'm going to allow it to swing open all the way down until I get to my line here. And because it's the line z equal to 1 with slope 1 and everything is in a 1 to 1 relationship, that angle will be 45 degrees or pi over 4 in radians. That tells me my limits of integration for phi are between 0 and pi over 4. I'm now going to fix a typical value of the angle phi in that range and see what that tells me about the length rho. So remember that rho is the distance from the origin to the point that you want to get to. For a given value phi, that's a blue angle that I've drawn here, I'm allowed to start with rho equal to 0, and then I have to exit my region at this point here. That point, that distance there, is going to depend on what the current value of phi is. So the most important thing here to observe is that rho, its limits of integration, its, its upper limit of integration in particular, will be a function of the angle phi. To illustrate this point, Consider the case when phi is equal to 0. That's when the angle is along the z-axis. In this case, your rho will go from 0, walk along the z-axis until you get to the height of the red plane, which is z equal to 1, so rho goes between 0 and 1. If you were to go to the other extreme, when phi is equal to pi over 4, so now that's the angle formed by the z-axis and the line z equal to r, you are allowed to walk along the hypotenuse of the triangle, the uh, outer profile of the cone, and because it's a 45 degree angle and the, these sides are both 1, that length is actually longer than 1, it's square root of 2, it's the hypotenuse of a square, or a diagonal of a square with one, uh, 1 on each side. For values of theta, or values of phi rather, in between 0 and pi over 4, that length will be some number between 1 and square root of 2. What I've done here is taken that typical value of phi, that blue angle here, and I'm thinking about the triangle that it forms, this right triangle down below. The left leg of it, this upper leg of it, is always 1. That doesn't change. The top of the cone is always equal to z equal to 1. So this side is always 1. But it's this hypotenuse that's varying as I change phi. Well, I can just use trigonometry to find a relationship between how phi and rho are, are related to each other, and because I know the adjacent side and the hypotenuse is what I want to say something about, cosine of phi is the way to go, and I get cosine is 1 over rho. Solving that for rho, I get secant of phi instead. 
What this tells me is that when I want to find the length from the origin to the line z equal to 1, I should use the secant function to tell me that value of rho. And in other words, my limits for, of integration for rho go from 0 to secant of phi. And now we've completed constructing the integral, and if you calculate this integral, you'll get the volume of that blue cone. As an exercise, and it's definitely a little more challenging, a little harder here, you might consider a different order of integration. You might go in uh, the order d phi, d rho, d theta instead, switch the inner integrals around, and it's a little more challenging, and in fact it will probably take two integrals added together in order to get the right answer.